6.5 is about graphing linear inequalities, um, inequalities. We have graphed inequalities in chapter 3. We learned to graph as open or closed circle. We learned to also shade to the proper side. So, so far what we should know about inequalities is if x is greater than or equal to 3, we put a 3. We close it because it says equal to 3 and we shade it to the right. We learned that when we have x is less than 15 that we put a 15, an open circle because it's not equal to 15 and that this is pointing to the left. That was nice, but it's not going to work like that anymore in terms of the arrow. Uh, this process does represent graphing in one dimension. Notice that our graph only has one dimension of measurement, which is length. So it just goes one direction. The open circle, remember, is used because the value is not included. The closed circle is used because the value is included. It's very important that you kind of bring that with you. Really, that's the only thing you need to bring with you is the open versus closed part because the rest of what you're doing is kind of new. Um, this is the only portion that stays consistent, as I just said, when moving to two-dimensional graphing. Uh, why must I shade when I encounter an inequality? Well, you got to remember that an inequality represents a range of answers. This is because we must be sure to indicate the proper location of the answers. When you shade to the left of a number, you're telling the person everything on this side can be true, or everything on that side can be true. And so whenever there's more than one thing that can make it true, if an inequality is a lot, you need to make sure you indicate that. In terms of linear inequalities, the line that we graph represents the line that separates solutions from non-solutions. Write that down because that is important. And put a star by it because it's going to help us later on. Uh, depending on whether we include the value or not, we will use a certain type of line. We will use a solid line when the value is included. So if the value is included, you'll draw a line like this. Use a dashed line when the value is not included. So if it's not included, you use a line like that. All right. If you get confused, just remember that the less than greater than symbols lead us to an open circle. Therefore, it makes sense that we would use an open line. Again, a line with holes in it. All right. Also remember that the less than greater than I'm sorry, less than equal to, greater than equal to, led us to a closed circle. Therefore, it makes sense that we would use a closed line, which would be a solid line in general. So again, just these are things you kind of have to get used to, things you have to be ready for. But again, just like anything else, the more you practice it, the better off you're going to be. Just don't be afraid to mess up. And again, understand that's just a part of the process. The main part of this activity is to teach us how to determine the direction. So remember that the line separates all solutions from non-solutions. This means that we can test one value. So you can test any value you want in terms of testing a point, but your answer determines everything. Typically the best point to test is 0, 0. For those of you who did the uh, x-intercept, y-intercept by ignoring the x and the y, you understand the ease of 0, 0. What happens when you plug in 0, 0 is your x turns into 0, your y turns into 0, and you can get your answer. Well, if 0, 0 was true, let's say you test 0, 0 and you get a true statement, remember that this separates everything true from everything that's not true, which means that every, if this is true on the left, that means that everything on the left should also be true, and so therefore you would shade towards that true statement. All right. So again, you pick a point. After you graph your line, you pick a, because you don't know what side's what. You don't know who's true, who's telling truths and who's telling lies. So you pick one person and you ask them a question. And if they tell you the truth, it means that everybody in this room will tell you the truth. And so therefore, that is your side. Same thing, graph your line. Pick a point. Again, the easiest point to pick is 0, 0. If you find out that that person is telling lies, that means that everyone in this room is telling lies, which means that this is not the side you want to shade, it would be here. So again, notice, you're going towards the truth. So once you find the truth, shade the truth. If the person you found is true, shade towards that person. If the person you found is false, shade away from that person because you don't want to include that person in your shading. Now there are occasions <clears throat> to where you cannot use zero, 0, and so in that case you have to pick a point. I usually pick this point. Again, we can't do this because the line goes through 0, 0, so I would usually pick that. And just make sure you understand that that is 1, 0. <clears throat> so you would plug in 1 in for x, 0 in for y. Can't do that right now. But you would plug 1 in for x, 0 in for y, and then from there, you, again, depending on if it's true or false, you would make your call. And that would determine, again, true means you would shade over here, false means you would shade over there, and that would do it. All right? So, moving on. Sorry, that phone just kind of threw me off. So how do we actually test a point? We plug in a coordinate. 
plug in a value or a, yeah plug the coordinate into the inequality to see if it's true or false uh, the process is decently simple as long as you understand what it represents again practice and ex experience will make it more understandable as you go so we've done these before where we're going to graph y is greater than 4 on a Cartesian plane first off remember y and 4 means go to where y is 4 1 2 3 4 remember that your line is going to go through y again we did this before but remember also that this would be a open circle so therefore we're going to use a open dashed line and then test 0 0 when we test 0 0 there's only one letter to turn into 0 so what we do is we test it we do 0 greater than 4 is 0 greater than 4 that's false which means this is false and I usually put that answer by the point which means if that's false and I want everything that's not included in that. Alright. Here, again, x is less than or equal to negative 3. So I go to where x is, because this is one of those x equals graphs. So 1, 2, 3. Greater than or equal to means you actually are going to have a solid line because it would be a closed circle. So there is your line. And again, test 0, 0, because again, that's the, it's available, so I would test it. That means turn x into 0 is 0 smaller than negative 3. Would the alligator choose nothing over debt? I don't think so. Debt is much better than nothing. At least you don't owe anybody anything. So this is also false, which means that's false, which means, again, since that is false, we'll go to that side. This is where you get your review from last week. I think this was chapter 5.3 and 5.5 .5 if you were watching your videos. This is sl uh, slope intercept form. The 2 means go up 2 and put a dot. The 3 halves means go up 3 over 2 and put your dot. That is a closed circle, so that means that we would use a closed line. After that, again, notice 0, 0 is available, and it usually will be. So we go over here, we test 0, 0. Again, the easiest way to test 0, 0 is just turn this into 0. So that will be 0 less than or equal to. Wouldn't 3 halves times 0 just be 0 plus 2? Simplify it, 0 less than or equal to 2. To me, 0 is smaller than 2, so that's true. Which means since that is true, we stay on that side and we shade over there. You don't, always, you don't need to like color in the whole thing, but the general... Uh, indicator of where your side is, is is very important and then of course we had standard form graphs that we did to where since this is standard form we ignore y get 4x and I just use equals because it's not the sign doesn't really matter at this point that would be x equals 3 which is 1 2 3 and then don't forget that that's a negative 3y equals 12 which means that y would be negative 4 those two points give me a line Again, that is a open circle, so we will use a open line. And then we need to test a point, 0, 0. Well, again, 4 times 0 is 0, minus 3 times 0 is 0. That's why 0, 0 is good. Bring the sign down. 0 minus 0, of course, is 0. Is 0 bigger than 12? No, that is false. And since that is false, it means we don't want this side. We want that side. All right. This is a good moment to solidify your graphing skill. Just remember, you must determine which side of the line represents the good side before moving on to the next question. Uh, most people graph a perfect line, but they miss points because they overlook the shade. Uh, they also put the wrong type of line. So again, just make sure you are practicing and not allowing frustration to make you make a bad choice if you bump into a problem send me the picture again it's really not that bad it's not that hard and those of you who have sent me the pictures of your work have found out that I can help you usually within about two to three minutes even when you text me at six o'clock or seven o'clock in the evening so again just make sure you do what you need to do to learn this stuff and we'll be good other than that good luck talk to you later